Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of my Discord.py series. So today I will be showing you guys a little bit more about embedded messages. So last time I showed you guys embedded messages, I only showed you about one parameter that we passed in, which is the title, right? Now I'm going to be showing you guys four more. Um, I'm also be showing you guys uh, how to add and take away roles based on reaction. So last time we, we learned how to add a reaction to a specific message. So today I'll be showing you guys how to use those reaction and check for when a user clicks on them and we give them a role based on that, right? So let's get started. So for embedded message, I will be showing you guys a second uh, parameter that we can do, which is a description one, right? So a description one would be a little bit smaller than the title, but it will basically be a description of the title, right? I will be changing the title now. Since we're working with a welcome bot, like adding and removing roles, I'm going to change this into, and I change it to welcome to exceed. Now for the description, I'm just going to give them a simple description of uh, exceed, right? So what am I? I am a coding YouTube channel. And let's see. So another um, thing that we can pass in is a URL. So basically the URL will link the title to somewhere. So let's link it to Google, right? This could be to your um, website, your personal portfolio. Another thing that we can pass in is the timestamp, right? So a timestamp will show when you created this message and when it was created. So we're going to be using the date time library, which in Discord is not automatically imported, right? It's native of Discord, but it's not automatically imported for you. So to use the uh, date time module, we have to first import date time, right? And then from date time, we want to import date time. So we want to import the function, the class of date time inside of the file date time. And not to use this date time module, we want to do date time dot now. This will give us the current time, right? Like my current time. Next, we can also have a color for this. And for this color, you can just look up Discord color and it will give you back like a little hexadecimal looking one. And you can just copy and paste that. So I'm going to show you guys a little cool teal color, right? So now that I have this, let's run it and let's see what happens. So let's go into our Discord and let's check up buy, right? So let's type in buy. And as you can see, it gave us a pretty good looking um, embedded messages. It showed us when we made that embedded messages. It also showed us a little description. It then gave us like a little hyperlink of the um, title, right? So this title, if we click on it, it will bring us to Google, right? And as you can see over here, it turned the sidebar into a little um, teal color. As you can see up here, the default is actually a black little sidebar right so now we just modify that to become a little teal color <laughs> now since this is our um, welcome bot we want to add some reactions to this um, message right so that the user can actually use it but remember we don't want this to be um inside of this channel we want it to make a whole different channel called welcome right so let's make a channel called welcome and let's pull it above now let's call buy but like we don't want to call buy yet we want to wait for the reaction so let's add those reactions. So let's do await MSG. And then how would we add a reaction? We would just call add underscore reaction, right? And remember what data types we want in here. We want a string of the reaction. And where can we get the emojis? Like the different like reactions emojis that we have? Well, there's a website called emoji that I showed you guys last time, this website. So you can just give this website any emoji name and you it will give you back that emoji. And then you can just click copy down here, right? So I want a little blue square and a red square. So let me add the blue square first, right here. So this is a blue square and let's add the red square now. So let's just copy and paste this down because it's going to be the same function and we just need a different emoji. So this is a red emoji now and let's comment it, red square, right? So now that we have that, let's rerun our bot. Yes, we want to rerun. And now let's go into our welcome message. Now let's type in buy. And now as you can see, the bot gave us a red and blue square. So whenever the user reacts based on this, the bot will then give a user a role, right? So let's delete my message because we don't want to see this here. We only want this bot to be able to um, do this, right? Okay, so for the upcoming part, we need to be able to go and see like the channel IDs and message IDs, right? So to do that, we need to go into the settings bar down here in this little cog wheel. Click on here, we then go to appearance. We then scroll all the way down and we see developer mode. 
the developer mode would then let us see the channel IDs, the message IDs, or user IDs, any of those stuff, right? Click yes, and we're done. So now based on those rows, we want to make those rows, right? Because those rows don't exist yet. So we want to make a row. So let's go to rows and let's make another row, adding the plus sign up here and let's call this blue, right? So let's make this a blue and we can display it differently, right? Save changes. Now let's make a red row, red, blue and red. Let's make this a custom red color. So we separate it and we save it. So now we have two rows called red and blue. Remember these names, these are case sensitive names. So when we add the rows later, it needs to be exactly the same name. Okay. Now let's start on our rows, right? So in Discord, there's two different um, uh, events. So we're going to be working with events now, right? So we're going to be doing bot.events. And now we're going to be making a function. And then we're calling this function a special, a special name that Discord gives us. So we're calling it from the, um, so from the documentation, Discord gives us two events, a on reaction add events and an on raw reaction add. So the difference between these two is that on reaction add, it only looks at the specific messages that the bot saves. On reaction raw is the entire server, everything, right? So what we want is actually the entire server. So on raw reaction add, because this one is limited. This one, I think it only looks up to 500 other messages, the internal cache. So what if our message is too old? Can't look at that anymore. So we want the raw version, right? So we want to copy this. We can literally just copy this and paste it, right? That will be our new function. So let's, so yeah, it's a little different, right? So we're taking in a payload. So what is a payload? A payload is basically a little dictionary. If you're familiar with Python or a object in JavaScript or a hash table in like C++ or other languages like that, right? It's just a container with a key and a value, right? So it's just like that. And we can access those by doing a payload.key, right? But in this instance, we want to get back the message ID, right? Because we only want uh, we only want Python to look at this message. So let's copy the message ID and let's make a new um, variable called our underscore message ID, right? So this is our message ID and let's just paste it in as an integer because payload will then give us back a integer also. So then we want to check if the message that we're getting in from payload is the same thing as the message that we're looking for. So we want to do an if statement and we want to compare our message ID and we want to check if it's equal to, so to equal sign. And if it's equal to the payload dot message underscore ID, this is one of the keys that payload gives us, which is a message underscore ID. And these are like the different stuff that the payload gives you, right? They give you a channel ID, a emoji, event type, guild ID, member, message ID, and user ID, right? So these are what the payload can give you back. So we access the message ID. So we access this one, right? Okay. So if the message ID is the same message as our, uh, the message that we want, because we don't want some random user like in a different channel to react to a message and then automatically gain a role, right? We only want users to, um, if they added reactions to our message, that way they will get that role. So this is just a check for that, right? So we just want, so now we want to get the member of the, the this um, server, right? So then we can just do a member and member is equal to what? Member is equal to payload.member, right? Because payload already gave us a member. Now we need a guild. So what do we do? So then we would just do guild is equal to, guild is equal to member.guild. So we're just looking for our member and we're looking for the guild that they're in, right? And now we want to get the emoji name. So emoji and emoji name would then be equal to the payload dot emoji dot name, right? And the emoji, it has a name attribute to it, which gives them, which gives us back a name, right? So now we want to check. We want to do a if emoji is equal to the blue square first, right? So let's go down here and let's copy the blue square and let's paste it in right so if it's a blue square we would then set the row and we'll set the row equal to and now we're going to be doing a little bit like it's this is going to be a little bit complicated right so now we're going to call discord the discord api and we're calling the utilities 
library. Now we want to use a function from the utilities library, which is the dot get. Dot get will give us a bunch of, it will basically iterate through whatever that we gave it and it will find the rows, right? So we want to give it guild.rows. So we want it to iterate through guild.rows and we want it to stop when it finds a name is equal to capital B blue, right? So once, so it will loop through the rows of the guild and once it finds blue, it will then return a row object. We want to do the same thing for red, right? So let's just copy and paste and do this. But now we don't want an if statement, we want an else if statement, right? Because we only want one of these triggered, not both of these triggered. And now we'll just copy up the red square like this. And we'll change this to capital R E D red, right? Spelling matters in this case. So if you name your thing like lowercase b, then it has to be a lowercase b, right? And now let's now that we have the rows, we just want to add that row, right? So it's an await command. And now we're awaiting the member. And then in the member class, we have a dot add underscore row. And now we want what row do we want to add? We want to add the rows that we got from up here, right? So if it's blue, it'll be blue row. If it's red, it'll be red row, right? So now let's test this and run it. And let's go find Discord. And now let's check if we can add it. As you can see, we clicked on blue and we get a blue. Now let's click on red and we have the red row, but the blue road overrides us. So let's cancel out the blue row and there you go. We're red. So now let's work on a, the opposite of this basically. So let's just copy and paste this down here. So we want to work on the opposite of this. So we want to do a on raw reaction remove, right? We want to take in the payload as normal. And we also want to use our uh, message ID like this. Now the hard part, <laughs> because in raw reaction uh, remove, um, it doesn't give us the member or the guild ID. So we have to get those ourselves. So we can get those using a special little command. We can make guild again and we'll make guild is equal to await. And then we call a command. We then call bot dot fetch. So we're fetching. What do we want to fetch? We want to fetch the guild, right? And how, what guild ID do we want? We give it the payload dot guild underscore ID. So this will get us back the guild ID, which the bot will fetch. And it will give us assign that guild object to a guild variable that we assign, right? So now, we want to get that emoji. So the same thing here, copy, paste it down. And now it's the same thing. We just copy and paste this down and we are mostly done now, right? So we have the rows, but now instead of adding the rows, we would then want to remove the rows, right? But remember, I remember how I said that they don't give us a guild. They also don't give us a member function. So we have to do that ourselves. So it'll be member. So now we want to get a member, but how do we get a member, right? So we call it the await function. And inside that await function, we would then look inside the guild, right? So instead of doing bot.fetch, we're doing guild.fetch. So we're fetching the member list from this guild. And now we want the members when we're fetching, right? And what do we give this? We give it the payload and we give it the user ID. Okay. So you might ask, what's the difference between a member and a user? So a user, it's your user, like you're, you are a user and you're a part of multiple guilds or servers. A member is a member of a specific guild. And that's the difference. You can't add role to a user. You can add roles to a member of a guild though. So now that we have a member, we then should check if that member is not none. So what we're doing here is that we're checking if the user exists, right? If the member exists. So then we would await member dot remove underscore rows. And then what do we want to remove? We want to remove the rows that we found above it, right? And then we also want to have else statements, just like a little debugger for us. And we can just do member not found. And now let's test our code. Let's rerun it and let's try it out here. So right now I have a red row. Let's see if I click this button, let's see what happens. And now I don't have that row anymore, right? Let's do it. I have a blue row. I click it. I don't have a blue row anymore up here. If you look up here, I'm red now, I'm blue. 
but if I get rid of the blue, I'm back to red, right? So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you back here again next time. Bye-bye.